ahead and bring in Steiner Sports CEO, Brandon this Steiner. One of the country's top this memorabilia mogul. I have an unbelievable guest, this Brandon is Steiner. Brandon's second to none. The Brickershaw Ferguson, well, Hillcrest Wealth Advisors, no, you probably wouldn't know that's where he works, but mm -hmm. I tell you what I love about him, besides the gorgeous tie he's got on, you know, I'm a tie guy, but I love that he showed up for work every day, I didn't miss a game in 10 years, that moves me, if I can get my employees to kind of follow some of that suit and convince all of you that showing up is 90% of it, and doing it with consistency and with integrity, when I think about your game, Welcome, good to see you. Pleasure, when I think pleasure. about your game, I think about a guy that came to work with his lunch pal, worked hard. Um, it's crazy when you think about an NFL career, not missing games and not taking days off, which I think consistency over time equals credibility, mm -hmm. which is exactly what you earned, which is why if I were a betting man, we haven't talked about your career yet, but if I were a betting man, I would bet that you were going to be extremely successful in your next venture. Well, thank you for that. I really appreciate that. How you doing? I feel good. I feel good. Are you... I mean, you went to University of Virginia. Yes? Yes. So this is not a a get, a get over easy school. <laughs> no. It's, you know what I'm saying? This is, is not a school you go to when you like, just want to check in on a few classes <laughs> and play sports. But you could have probably done that. Oh, man. No, I mean, UVA was a challenging campus, um, but I'm, I'm happy for the experience. It's a beautiful school, I got to tell you. I mean, phenomenal facilities. But, I mean, you had to go to class. Like, you actually, are, you're... You're smart. Well, you're not a typical, you know, guy who was like really athletic. Knew you're going to maybe go to the NFL and just trying to get a get over degree. You know, you know. I think the one thing about UVA is um, when you talk to the other people on campus, the other students, and you hear the type of conversations they have and the type of questions they ask. It's like, okay, I'm in a different environment. Um, and I think it was less about me trying to be like them and more about me trying to figure out, okay, how do I best work. And how am I going to succeed? How am I going to, you know, get to the next uh, level or next year? I mean, the first year was very challenging. You know, starting playing football, new environment. Um, but I think overcoming that obstacle and, and continuing was. I mean, it was an eye opener because now you kind of learn like, who am I, and how can I, how do I uh, respond when I'm faced with you know adversity. And you work through it. I you get drafted. It. Um, uh, I think you're a first round pick, right? I was. I think number four is that four overall. Yeah. So you're a lottery pick. So you were no sleeper. <laughs> I mean, right? But meantime, you're still working on both sides. So now here you're on the other side of it. Had a great career. Did you save your money? I did. I did. I mean, I think it's a blessing. Um, you know, not everything went according to plan, but uh, I felt like. That was something that I always wanted to do, I, I, especially when you hear so many stories about athletes and, and some of the troubles that they have. It's like, you know, I just want to make sure I'm a good steward with these funds. And it, it's not something that I did alone. I had a strong family uh, system, whether that be my, my parents or my wife. I mean, uh, there were people around me that I think had my best interests at heart. Um, but it's definitely a goal of mine. I wanted to be able to you know, retire when I was ready to, and I think on your terms, on my terms, and I think, uh, yeah, making sure that that was taken care of was a big, big part of that. You said some things didn't go your way. What did go your way? What What did you like uh, over those ten years playing in the NFL? Let's stay on the positive note here. Like, what went well? What did you like? I mean, just being able to. I mean, if we're talking about football, having the ability to, you know, play um, at a high level. I mean, you you play and meet so many great people. Um, people that you've only you know, you know heard about or, or seen on TV, but you know, to to actually play with those guys, whether it be you know the Chad Penningtons, the Mike Vicks, the Brett Favre's, I mean all these guys are uh, elite athletes, and um, you know it was great. It was real uh, unique opportunity to, to to go to three Pro Bowls, unique opportunity to go to back to back AFC Championship games. I mean those are experiences that. Um, you know, you'll never forget. You know, to get to walk across the the stage at Ra uh, Radio City, and you know, know that what that feeling felt like when they announced your name, and you have all the the fans yell like that. That is something I'll never forget. So, love Chad Pennington, by the way. Yeah, what a class guy, and, and it is a blessing. I don't know if we really fully, I don't know if New York really fully understood what a quality guy there we got, and yeah, it's kind of ups and downs with the injuries. 
What you do in the off seasons? Like, I was just curious what you did. You know, I always talk about playing your tomorrow today. Mm-hmm. So you play, and I know the season's a rigorous season, but were you preparing for your next career in your off seasons, or were you trying to take it easy? What What was the deal there? I think it's a, a you know a, a little bit of everything. I, I think I've always been intrigued in in trying different things. So I mean, it wasn't immediate. Hey, I'm going right to finance. I think that would be uh, disingenuous. I, I think it was a more of a function of you know, maybe this off season I'm going to take a class in psychology, or maybe this off season I'm going to try to learn how to, you know, do hockey, or this off season I'm going to learn. Like I always try to try to do something that was unique to my interests and what I, you know, explore a little bit. But then when it was time to to hunker down and, and get to work, that was a priority. I mean, I knew that off season was where you 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 build gains and and made the advantage. So um, I, I definitely. Took some time for myself, but when it was time to work, you got to go to work. A lot of Jeff fans out there watching, but also a lot of sports fans, and and a lot of people that want to reset. Yeah, you know they've done something now that they they, they worked or only worked to a point. They want to do something new. What were the difficulties in the transition? You go from being a top level, you know, star. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden now you're. Back on the gravy train, grinding. You start yeah. for. The, I mean, nobody's giving you any love. I mean, yeah. unless you could block over there at, at your wealth management firm, like it wasn't like you can block or tackle anybody there. So, how how humbling was that? And what, what were some of the difficulties? You know, it's very humbling. I think whenever you transition from uh, an environment where you are doing well or considered to be uh, the best at your craft, um, and going into a new space, it's it's very challenging. I think. So much of this is about you know knowing who you are and relearning who you are, and it, it, that takes time. It's a process. It's uncomfortable, um, but I think the more you're diligent in it, the more you kind of grind and, and and use some of those same skills that you know. Now we're not talking about the last ten years or the last fifteen years, but when you first started playing football, you were first introduced to the game like some of those challenges like oh well how do you block or what happens when you know a play doesn't go right not you know when I was in the league but when I first started playing football that's kind of how I feel now because I'm re- I'm learning a new craft even though I might have a big interest in it um, and then who's your team you know uh, you know one of the, the people that work here Kelvin Joseph uh, Joseph talked about you know there's no one person is successful. It's a, it's really about that team and who's a, who's who's a part of that foundation. You're that in that speech. Yeah, that, that I, you I got turn a team. To. Yeah, who's the people that are going to keep you humble and the people that are going to build you up and help you. You need that. That's key. Oh, it's no you, question. You know, you can't do it um, by Alone. yourself. I know. I mean, so much of uh, nowadays you hear self-made, self-made, but it's very hard to do it by yourself. Almost impossible. So. It's that team that's real important. So you're in a learning mode, mm-hmm. which you're always really in a learning mode. I guess the big question is, what's the toughest part of this game now? Is it the relationship building, finding new, finding clients, learning how this business works? There's so much behind, you know, how you can invest your money. What's easy for you and what's hard? You know, I don't think there's any easy answers. I'm a part of a team, so okay. um, I, I enjoy learning of those things. But I think relationships and, and meeting new people and trying to explain to them the value add is, is something that I, I want to focus in. Uh, the team that I have, uh, they're very technically sound. I mean, Dan Yu is somebody I've worked with for you know six, seven years, so we have a great relationship. Tom Buratella, again, another member of the financial advising team. Um, but I enjoy dealing with people. You know, I enjoy having conversations and talking about my story. Those are some of the things that I think really resonate. Um, but again, it's it's always learning about how to put yourself in the best situation so uh, you can you know help the most amount of people. Hey, brother, just on a side note, like the Bricker Shaw is not like a really. I know you probably asked this question, but. Where does that name come from? The Bricker Shaw is such an unusual yeah. name. So 1983, The Thornbirds was a TV miniseries. Uh, my dad and my mom, they, they really loved it. And there was a character, uh, Cardinal the Bricker Saul. Uh, and my dad uh, just, you know, changed the name slightly. Uh, but that's that was the heart of where it came from. Now, how much, how much of an imp- impact and effect have your parents had on your career and on your life, the way you think from business and sports and as a person? Huge. I think the value of, I mean, I was just with them this past weekend, you know, the value of uh, having, you know, a dad and a mom, I mean, I, I'm very fortunate for that. You know, um, I, I think 
they were able to teach me uh, and, and raise me in a way that um, they could be proud of and I'm proud of now because of uh, the, the things that they've done. So Give me, give me a couple of your, your most famous, you know, if I were, you were to describe your mom or describe your dad, I mean, give me a couple of their, what's, so, their, what's their mantra? You know, my dad uh, he, uh, he was from the Bahamas. Um, Is that a good thing? Yeah, I mean, it's a good thing. It could also be a, a hard thing, you know, I think, you know, uh, he he definitely uh, instilled the discipline. He was disciplinarian. Okay. One of the things that he brought, uh, you know, he liked martial arts growing up. So we all did martial arts as a family. And really? uh, you know, I, you know, when I grew up, you know, not, not that I'm the oldest person, but uh, you know, Van Damme, Steven Seagal, these guys were like, you know, everything. And uh, so I, you know, I tried it, did a little taekwondo, um, wow. and then eventually we went to Shotokan. Uh, which is a Japanese art style. And he's like, look, you know, we're going to get our black belts. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, I just want to try it and do it. And he's like, no, we're going to do it. So it took a number of years, I don't know, six years, whatever, for us to, six, so seven don't, years. Don't mess with you. I mean, you're, you're, I was, you're a I dangerous was, cat. I, was, I mean, admit it. You're, you're, you're not only big, strong, but you're also dangerous. You can shot me up in about 20 I was, I was a young guy, you know, um, and I, I think that was a great entryway into to football because I had that foundation. I understood, you know, what it was to do things when I didn't want to do it, you know, because I couldn't quit. <laughs> um, Disappointed. Discipline, and I, I, you know, a lot of people ask, "Oh, did the karate help you with your hands?" And I don't know, but I know the discipline helped me with the, you know. But doing things even when you don't want to do them is such a big thing. I would say commitment is not always convenient. It's another way of saying it, but it's amazing how many people, when they don't want to do it, even though they know they're supposed to do it, won't do it, and that's really what, that can drag you down. You know, I think that you know, consistency yeah. is is key because I think when you when you're consistent, you can learn from. Okay, I've been consistently doing it one way. I can pivot, or you know what, I'm getting this result when I'm doing it this way. But let me see if I tweak this. But if you're not, if you're inconsistent, how do you know where to make changes? And I think that's one of the things that you know consistency allows you to do, whether in football or whatever. Um, you know, practicing a certain way or watching film a certain way. It allows you to, you know the result of doing that. So when you make changes, you can say, ah, I'm getting increases. And I'm sure that's very applicable to, to anything that you do. I, I just find it amazing you, know, you go 10 years in a pro career and not miss a game. Yeah. How does that happen? It's a blessing. You know, I, I Is it luck, though, or were you eating right, resting? I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's a lot of things. I, I, I think it's, it's your wife probably God. Your wife probably takes a lot of credit. I, anybody could take credit, you know, but I, I just think the reality is it's, it's, it's very unique. I, I definitely think it was a Were you a really good eater? Healthy I, eater? I think I, I try to eat well, but eating well doesn't necessarily save people from injury. It, it, it could help. I it mean, could help. Did you sleep well? Did you get a I, lot of rest? I, I slept well, but I know plenty, plenty of people who sleep well and still were in the training room, so I, that's why I keep going back to it. It's a blessing, man. Maybe God, that that's, was God's plan for you. I so believe it. Now you're in this big, bad world of money management, <laughs> right, and, and wealth management, which is amazing, uh, amazing, especially in this day and age. Things seem to be doing pretty well uh, as far as the way our economy is going. What do you see for your future? What, 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 what would be your expertise as far as you being part of the team? Um, what, what's, what's the thing that you're going to try to master? I definitely think I'm always going to be a part of a team. I think uh, the relationships are key. I think I'm always going to have an interest, so that will allow me to build my financial acumen. But uh, I like that team environment. Um, you know, maybe um, I like to leave it a little open-ended because I know we plan so much in life. But, you know, five years from now, it will be interesting to see where I am and, and how I pivot. But I definitely think this is a space that I'll remain in. Uh, I've always had a lot of interests. I like to write. Um, I like to, you know, and I think meeting people allows me the ability to, to learn more and, and have different kind con- meeting you, having different kind of conversations, coming here, taking the tour, and, and seeing everything that you guys have done. I mean, that's a new experience for me as well. So. This place is a little different, right? It is. I mean, I, I saw the tour downstairs. You had the, the timeline. I'm like, man, that's, man. Uh, that's impressive. It's exhausting, <laughs> but yes, it's impressive. I mean, but you, it's funny because you have a ten-year career. You probably never saw us coming mm. you know, to know this kind of thing right. existed, right? I couldn't Just, plan this. What do you tell your What do you tell yourself to break a show? Like, what would you if you had a conversation with your fifteen-year-old self, knowing now everything? You'd be in high school now, 
knowing what you know now, mm-hmm. what would you tell your 15-year-old self? Just worry about being 15. You know, I think a lot of times we do try to forward think and say, oh, you know, I'm going to be this, that, and the third. But, you know, focus on the problems or the issues that you have to deal with at 15 because having the knowledge of a 30-year-old at 15, I don't think it helps that person. I think it might overwhelm him. And so I just be 15, you know, try to do things with a sense of excellence, but I, I don't want to put too much pressure on young Brick. <laughs> okay, that's fair. And what do you tell yourself now as far as this next career you have? What do you think the most important thing you want to try to do is? I, I think I want to go in it with a sense of, you know, uh, a, a empty cup mentality, try to learn what I can. I don't want to you know, put so much pressure on myself where I, I, I don't enjoy the process. You know, I think playing football was a, a, a blessing for a number of reasons, but it also allows me to choose the things that I want to do and have a better, um, you know, so if I'm doing it and I'm choosing to do it, I should enjoy it. And I think uh, just learning as much as I can, surrounding myself with people who have done what I'm trying to do, I don't, I'm not doing a new thing. You know, I think I'll be doing it in a unique way, my way, but, you know, learning how people have done it and how they've had success, that's what I'm, I'm aspiring to do. But you're a student. Mm-hmm. You've learned to be a good student, and that's so critical, it seems to me. You, and, I mean, starting from high school, college, right? You're not going into Virginia without being a good student. What do you think about the NFL player today? You know, now when you look back on it, how do you help the NFL player today? You know, what help does that player need that it just seems like that NFL player is in a little bit of flux? Um, that, that it doesn't seem like, I don't know, for some reason when I look at the league, and the, it just doesn't seem like things are just, for such a profitable, money-making, extravaganza league, it just seems like everybody should be coolly cool and happy. It doesn't seem like that's the case. What, can, what, what today is needed for the everyday player? You know, it's it's that's a hard question to answer. You know, I think the league has continued to evolve. It was different when I played. It was different ten years uh, even before, and I think it will be different as we look into the future. I think uh, in, in recent years we've seen how impactful uh, how politics have played a role in the league. We've seen how uh, having a voice has been a, a big key factor in in playing into the league, and I think that's. A little different because even I retired in 2015. Um, the issues of kneeling and so forth that's that arose in the 16 and the 17s. And so I think uh, as much as you know the the game is we want to focus on the game. I think there's other issues that are, are been brought into the forefront. Uh, so I just think it's it's a little bit more authentic now, right? Because we're dealing with things that are really affecting people's lives and, and causing uh, impact. And not everybody agrees on how things should be handled. And I think that even though we've always seen, you know, the NFL as a refuge, it's more of now uh, an image of, hey, this is real people playing the game. Business. Real real issue. There's business. And you can kind of see it working all in conjunction, right? People are saying, ah, you know, this is a confrontational issue. Perhaps we don't want to talk about it, but that's not the right answer. People are saying, you know, let's demonstrate, let's show. um, And it's bringing a certain awareness, but that's also having a a cause and effect. Um, And then we also look at the players and we're like, oh, well, maybe they're not uh, how they used to be, but now we've also made changes because things like CTE and issues of, 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 of the body are more in the forefront. So now we're trying to make tweaks to put players in a better position. So I just think so many things are coming to a head now where it can't just be go ahead and play football. It, it, it's, it's, not that, it's not that day anymore. It's a confusing day, I think. And uh, I always kind of laugh because when it's convenient, but it really isn't when it's convenient. It's this whole thing's a business, mm-hmm. and you're grateful to have a business that you could also play a sport. It's certainly a blessing and a bonus, but I think it's become now more apparent that there's a compromise, just like me. I mean, I'm owned by a company. I partners with the Yankees. I can't just be doing whatever I want. I got restrictions. I got people to answer to, and that's what it comes down to. Like, you forget because you're playing a game, mm-hmm. but you got people you got to answer to. And most important, what I try to tell players when I'm working with them is like, look, the most important to keep your eye on is what's going to happen at the end. What kind of situation you want to be in because it's not the end of your life. 
It's just the beginning year. You're going to be young when you finish playing, which is so hard when you, most people finish their careers. They're really old, and they're going to ship off to you know some sunny place to play some golf. You guys are just babies. I mean, you're in your young 30s. Like, what, what do you, and that's what I think a lot of times the message get missed with the kids uh, that are playing is, man, use this as a springboard. This is just going to be part of your life. Only a, and as we look back, a, a smidgen. You know, I think it's it's it's, uh, it's hard though because I think when you're coming out of college, when you're into the league and you've played a while, I mean, these are like peak years, and so you you have not only a lot of ideas, you have a lot of dreams. There's things that you want to see change, um, but the, it's also a very unique experience. You know, how many young players have millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars have the ability to play it at a, a, a high level? And so I think also using that platform to speak on things that. Yeah. Are, are important to you it's it, you may never have a chance to do that again um, you're right you're, you're trying to balance it like when you did, did you have did you feel like you got something accomplished when you were playing as far as or you were you kind of just to do your job and kind of keep keep kind of quiet guy you know i think about that because I, I do think you know when we talk about the career i can reflect and say man i've been able to you know play 10 years and have a certain level of success but i do think i've always been one that tried to stay away from controversy or maybe uh, didn't speak on um, on things that I thought would be, you know, important. Uh, I won't or, say important, or, 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 uh, or but personal. Or maybe maybe I'd say um, I think I was cautious. I, I do think when I talked a little bit about the CTE toward the end of my career and about how I felt that was something that I was surprised of how that situation was handled. You know, I felt good about saying that because I it when I saw the movie, when I read the book. It, you know, it resonated with me. You know, we were playing a game and we want to do it at a high level, but, you know, there's sometimes you want all the facts and not just some. And I think uh, that whole issue, that whole topic was very eye-opening. It's fair. Who are some of your favorite guys to hang out with over the course of your 10 years? You, you oh, got to have man. some fun. Like, there's some characters. You know, Willie Colon, Ben Agilano, Nick Mangold. I mean, usually it's, it's the linemen, you know. It's the linemen. You guys are tight. You spend a lot of time with those guys. and uh, Literally and figuratively. Oh, yeah. And I then, mean, there's not many people you you, you, you hang out with. Your, your butts are touching each other's butts. <laughs> right? I mean, not to mention. I mean, uh, and I'll say, you know, if you, you're a good line if you're uh, close with your quarterback. So yeah. if you're a bad line, you probably don't have a good relationship. With your quarterback. Which, you have a favorite quarterback for one of those years? Not favorite. I've had a lot of good relationships. I love Mark Sanchez. I love Chad Pennington. I love Gino. Like I, I got, uh, you know, Fitz. Like I, I, a lot of good relationships. You know, those guys. Uh, so you like them all? I do, man. Because I think each each one uh, each one forced me to. Each one you have good relationships, but everybody plays slightly different. Yeah, you know, and so even when you play, it's like okay, this one takes a deeper step, or okay, he's he's a little bit more shallow. So the defensive end will react differently because he might want to make a move quicker, or if the guy is a little bit deeper, he's he's gonna do more moves to try to either create space underneath or come around the edge. And so I think it really helped my. Who's game. the funniest? Funniest? Who's the funniest in the huddle? I always like funny quarterbacks. Like just talking about Fitz, random, Fitz was pretty random funny. stuff. Fitz, like somebody's Fitz. in the crowd or yeah, Fitzpatrick was he, uh, he? He's pretty funny. Like what, what? What would he do? I mean, I don't know. I, I can't give you all the the secrets of you the. Could, you could, know, could wanna, but I could, but nah, I, I, See, he went random. He went a little rogue every now and then just to crack you guys good, up a little man. bit. He's, uh, he's definitely a leader. Definitely a leader. Is it an us and them thing when you're in the middle of seventy thousand, several pe- million people watching and? It's cold. It's icy. You're trying to win win this war. Is it like an us and them thing, basically, when it comes down to it? I would never. I mean, I just can't even imagine what that must feel like when, you know, just you got you're in a war. It's 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 a unique experience. It's hard to recreate that now outside the game. You know, even the friendships that we have, those are always good. But it's like, how do you create a two minute situation when the weather's bad and you know you know on this snap that. If we don't score, we're going to lose the game, and they know we're going to pass, and we know we're going to pass, and I got a top rusher here, and I'm ready to go, and he's ready to go. He knows it's all one. Like, and there's, this, there's always this silence right before the, the snap of the ball because it's like the moment before it happens. And then it happens, and you're fighting, and he's going inside move. You're posting with your inside hand. He spins back out. You're trying to run him by the quarterback. You trip, he gets up. Like it's it's this battle, and uh, you know it's it's very hard to recreate that, uh, even in finance. Yeah, it, uh, you'll have some moments though when you, you know when some some stuff 
it's fun when you get in that moment in business uh, when you have a great strategy and you're confident and you got a bunch of people that you're confident in around mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. and you're going for the big splash. There's a little bit of risk, but you, you know better. You know better than the risk that's on the table. You'll feel it. I, don't know. I mean, that's at least from my experience. There's nothing better that, you know, you're prepared, you're confident. You know, you know you're going to get this one way or the other. Yeah. And you got some people, you've, you've, you've done the work. And then it happens. It's, yeah. It's the feeling, you know, it's that moment where you just say, like, wow, I knew that was going to happen. And it happened, and you got your customers what they wanted. They're going crazy, and they want more. And the player you're working with is happy because you told them it was going to happen, and it did. But, you know, that's just in our little business. But it'll happen for you, too. Well, I appreciate you know, that's what's beautiful that. about the economy and the world of marketing and the world of finance. It's just so up and down and unknown, and it is an experience game. How do people get a hold of you? And, and – um, are you a social media guy? or? I am. I mean, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, uh, so that would probably be the best way. Right. Um, you know, our company, we're actually revamping our website. So that's that's coming as well. But Hillcrest Wealth Advisors, look for me on LinkedIn. That's probably the best way to get Yeah, to I'm a big LinkedIn fan. I, yeah. I'm, I'm a fan. I think it's a great way to communicate. It's amazing still to me how many people still haven't figured out the LinkedIn thing. Like, LinkedIn's the new phone call. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm always calling anybody anymore unless yeah. my kids need money or something. Then I get a call. <laughs> well, they actually just text me. I don't even call anymore. Yeah. Dad, send, send me. money. Hell. Send money. <laughs> All right. Good to catch up, man. Anything else you want to follow up with? Anything else? No, nah, I just appreciate appreciate the invite. I'm happy to be here. And uh, maybe we can do this again so we can see, hey, how the story had changed. I like to talk about the trials and tribulations as you emerge and go through this transition, which I think, by the way, is very courageous. Thank not, you. You're not dabbling with this. You're in, you're in the mud. You're, we call in the mud in this room, meaning you're be, you want to become the best at wealth management. You're yeah. working to make it happen. You're not here dibbly dabbling. And I love that. I encourage that when people watching, like, hey, make the move and, and do it. Be yeah. all in. Yeah. And that's courageous because you could sit back on your celebrity. You made some money and yeah. you know, take a nominal community service job. <laughs> I right. think life is about the journey, and uh, you know that that can be cliche at times. But it's not always, "Hey, I did this, I did that." But it's like, you know, how do we keep it going? You know, how do you still be happy about the things that you're actively doing? And it's not easy to answer that, right? I think that's why you have to go out and kind of seek and and find and fight and try to be consistent. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. Good job on us in 10 years without missing a game, and now you're still showing up for work. It's, that's old school, man. <laughs> Where I look at it, right? <laughs> it is. It is old school. I love it. Your dad and mom did good. Good for Thank you. you. Thank the you. Show. Great Pleasure. to see you, my Pleasure. friend.